So what happens if a child doesn't get vaccinated against meningitis? Well, if a child doesn't get vaccinated against meningitis, then, I mean, it just, it puts them, um, it, it, I mean, by far it increases their, their risk of getting it. While it is a very rare disease and it's, it's not a very common disease, I mean, I still talk to people who have never even heard of it or don't know what it is. Uh, the unfortunate truth of the situation is it still happens and it affects kids when they don't expect it and it affects families when they, you know, aren't looking for it. And, and you know, it's almost like getting in a car. Uh, you don't expect to get into an accident. I mean, no one go, gets in our car going, hmm, I might crash today. But you still buckle your seatbelt anyway because you want that protection. And that's exactly what the vaccine is. is it's, it's protection that you might not never need, but if you do ever need it, you know, you'll be, you'll be happy it's there. When did you get meningitis and how did it happen? Um, well, I contracted meningitis when I was 14. I, I was at a summer camp uh, coming home from a three-day, 30-mile hiking trip when I started feeling sick and, you know, figured... Oh, I got the flu. I was just complaining and aching and and typical flu-like symptoms for, I don't know, maybe about 20 hours. And then all of a sudden, in a snap, uh, I got, I went from being, you know, pretty, pretty sick to being very sick. I mean, to the point where uh, they wanted to read me my last rites and, and they were giving me about a 10% chance of survival. Uh, I had all the amputations uh, about three weeks after I got sick. I was in a coma for two months. Um, and when I woke up, uh, I went through about nine months of, of hospital and rehab and all that. Uh, immediately once I got out, me and my mother started saying, okay, well, this happened to us. It's a really terrible situation, but how can we prevent it from happening to other people? Because there's a vaccine available. And while, uh, while I didn't get it, there's no reason why I shouldn't have. There's no reason why I shouldn't have heard of it before, which none none of us had. So our attention turned to how can we how can we get the vaccine out there? How can we get the word out about meningitis and, and how it is preventable? What inspired you to compete in the Paralympics? Well, uh, I'm, I've been an athlete my entire life. I remember in 1996 when the Olympics were in uh, uh, Atlanta, watching the athletes get their gold medals and thinking, oh, that's the coolest thing. I want to do that one day. And then when the opportunity arose to try out for the USA team and, and someone said, well, you know, if you really try, you could do this. It was just a no brainer. It's like, yeah, this is the kids, kids grow up dreaming of, of, you know, being an athlete at the top of their game. And this is my opportunity to represent my country. But more than that, represent myself in the Paralympics, you know, be at the top of my game, be live the dream that that every kid wants. What advice would you give to parents who do not vaccinate their children? Well, for parents who don't vaccinate their kids against, you know, bacterial meningitis, parents want to protect their kids. They want to give their kids the, the best help they can in life. You know, they want, to, they want to give their kids the best bike helmet. They want to give their kids the best running shoes. Um, they want to give their kids the best utensils for school and, and the best supplies for, for life. Well, this is something that parents never think of when it comes to protecting their kids because this is a this is one of those things that you either a never hear of or b never think of you know it's almost like an out of sight out of mind well if you get the vaccine then you don't have to think about it as much this is one of those you know now i got it so now I, it's more out of sight out of mind